So a functor from a category A to category B so a functor F from category A to category B consists of the following data. First is there is a mapping between classes of objects of A and classes of objects of B. So mapping between classes of objects of A and classes of objects of B. So the image of A say some object A is written as f of A. We just write it as f A. B for every pair of objects say A A prime of A there is a mapping. Yeah, so image of an arrow from A to A prime is just written as FF. It just be clear when I draw it. So you have an arrow in category A which takes A to A prime. This arrow we call it as F. You apply the functor to it, you get this. So the image of arrow is F A to F A prime and you write it as F F. So this these data A and B these are subject to the following two axioms. So the first is for a pair of morphisms say F is an arrow in category A which takes A1 to A2 and G is also an arrow in category A which takes A2 to A3. So let me write this down. G is an arrow in category A which takes A2 to A3. So this is what we will get. For every pair of morphisms F and G in category A. You apply F to them, a composition of two morphisms, you get FG composed with FF. So to make it clear, so in category A you had this diagram, A1 goes to A2 goes to A3. This arrow was F and this arrow or, or we call it morphism was G. So in category B, after you apply F to it, this is what you will get. And the second axiom, so yeah, all these things are intuitively clear. The second axiom is for every object A in the category A we have the following equality yeah you again the functor F takes us from A to B so this A to A you apply F to it so this is identity 1 FA so we have this equality F applied to 1 A is what you guess it should be 1 of F of A so on this slide we want to talk about contravariant functors so contravariant functors reverse arrows corresponding to the notion of contravariant functor is a covariant functor which does not reverse arrows. So let us write this down. So contravariant functor 
from category C to another category C prime is nothing but a functor from C op to C prime. Notice that I am using functor and covariant functor interchangeably. So there is nothing special about contravariant functor except that it reverses the arrows or the morphisms. So let us record this and then we will draw to make the point. So in category C, you have an arrow going like this, say pointing down. So when you apply a functor f to it, this arrow will go up. That means f is a contravariant functor. If this arrow does not change its direction, then it is a covariant functor. And mostly, so say a to b, we have an arrow f you apply functor f to it so we will have fb to fa yeah instead of a to b b to a i should be writing fb to fa so the arrow is reversed so if the arrow is not reversed then we say it is a covariant functor so now some important examples So the first example is of a forgetful functor. So, so take the functor from the category of vector spaces over a field K to the category of sets and mappings. So what does this functor do? It takes vector space and sends it to the underlying set. Since the morphisms in these vector spaces are nothing but linear transformations, these linear transformations are sent to underlying map of sets. So such a functor is called the forgetful functor. So another example, so this is like obviously a covariant functor. Another example is the fundamental group functor. So it sends a topological space X with a special point, say a chosen point X0 in X to the fundamental group. So objects and morphisms are obviously on one side we have topological space and continuous maps on the other side we have groups and group homomorphisms again topological space to abelian groups we can go so we say a topological space x is sent to say its ith homology group so sending to just the ith homology group is a functor So before we end, we should just write f here to correct uh, the mistake because we are in category C prime. So we capture some more definitions here. Consider f a functor from A to B. So this functor obviously will now send morphisms in A to morphisms in B. Essentially morphisms x to y in a to fx arrow fi in b so obviously f sends this now this map from arrows from x to y in a to arrows in fx to fi in b this map could be obviously x y belong to objects of a so this arrow or uh, this map which takes 
arrow in xy to arrow fx fy this if this is injective then this functor f is called faithful now if this map is surjective then f is called full and if it is bijective then f is called fully faithful so basically it tries to match arrows in category a with arrows in category b which are obtained after applying the functor f and uh, these following maps then are used to name the functor so if it is injective f is faithful if it is surjective f is full if it is bijective f is fully faithful so obviously a functor injective means of application of functor f could actually produce more arrows and objects than we started with so again uh, i want to just say that uh, when this is uh, a functor f from a to b is essentially surjective that is essentially surjective if for each uh, b as object of b there exists a corresponding object in a so let us write this down what i am saying for each p as object of p there exists a as an object of category a and there is an isomorphism from f a to b so pictorially it, it is easy to see you start with the object b of category b and corresponding there exists an object a in category a so that we have this apply f to it you land in category b and the arrow f a to b is iso so we want to now describe two specific type of functors and any functor which is isomorphic to these functors is called a representable functor so we start with fixing an object x in the category c and this functor c x comma a dot it is a functor from category c to underlying set so it takes an object y in category c and assigns to it an arrow from x to y so notice that object x is fixed now we are going from y to underlying set this follows directly from the definition so you need to check the definition of category again and see the set of morphisms the set of morphisms part 2 so that is the set we are talking about here so take any morphism say y to y prime f in the category c so this morphism uh, so you will always have from x to y and then you have this map y to y prime which i just drew on the left hand side say f this is f so because of this map from y to y prime we get a map from x to y prime so this is nothing but composition you first apply phi and then you apply f so what does this functor do c x comma dot which we can write c x comma f it carries a arrow from y to y prime in category c to x to y prime in the category set more importantly you need to know that the arrow x to y is now carried over to arrow x to y prime this is all happening in category set so this phi is carried to 
f not phi precisely because we could compose it with f in the category the arrow f was in category c this is important what is happening in the underlying set category is important now obviously we will put y on the other side now and again we will go from category c to underlying set again we have fixed the object y in category c so you take any object x in category c this will again get mapped to underlying set that is an arrow from x to y when i talk about this underlying set this follows from the set set of morphisms in the definition of category again i take an arrow say g from x to x prime in c and we want to see where this arrow g will get mapped in the category of set we will follow precisely as we did above so we have this from x to x prime we have g and we want we will show that x to x prime gets carried to x to y so first we will have this we have this map x to x prime g so we also have this map x prime to y which is given by phi so we see x to x prime gets mapped to x to y yeah so from category c x to x prime gets mapped to x to y more importantly we want to know what is happening inside the category set so inside the category set we have this arrow from x prime to y which is just say psi this is getting mapped to the arrow from x to y yeah so this this is happening precisely because we have been able to take the arrow from x to x prime and uh, make the commutative diagram in the category set so again i repeat it is important what is happening inside the category set notice the contra variance the arrow which went from x to x prime in category c now goes from c x prime y to c x y so we are going from in some sense x prime to x so we have a contra variance and uh, that is important to consider so again i will see i will say in part 1 at the top part we fixed the object x and the functor acted on the category taking it to underlying set and this underlying set comes from the set of morphisms now the question arises how does a morphism in c get mapped to morphism in set and uh, we have given the answer in the case 1 y to y prime gets mapped to x to y prime and in case 2 x to x prime gets mapped to x to y now these are actually made up yeah in both case 1 and case 2 we have essentially made up x to y prime in case 1 and x to y in case 2 precisely because we want this contra variance nature in case 2 which i have written in blue and this red uh, which i have written in uh, light red in the case 1 we want a covariance there this follows uh, this follows from the composition of maps but the motivation comes from homology and cohomology in algebraic topology so motivated from our discussion on the previous slide we want to not talk about functors which take modules over a which is a k algebra say k is a field so we want to talk about functors which take modules over a to modules over k these are probably the most important uh, functors and they are often used in commutative algebra so again this is just precisely in the previous slide we had category c which we have replaced by modules over a yeah so these are pf we start with fixing an object m which is a module over a 
Similarly, we can get a contravariant functor. So it, yeah, it reverses arrows just as we showed in the previous slide. So we want to make an important remark. So first we can construct an isomorphism, say mappings from a fixed object M, a, a module in, over A to a direct product. Yeah, this thing is isomorphic. So similarly like above we can have something like uh, this also obviously we cannot take direct product in the first factor because we have to define your arrows on the domains and if it is a direct product there are infinitely many things and you cannot basically decide on the objects therefore we take direct sum always in the first part so this direct sum filters out again you can construct these isomorphisms very naturally so similarly we can talk about tensor products so these tensor products we start with fixing n as a module over a and we use the property of the tensor product that it commutes with direct sum So let me write down what I have just said. So the tensor product will carry modules over A which is a K algebra to modules over K. And the tensor product commutes with direct sum. Yeah, and that is pretty much it. So a functor F from category C to category D is an equivalence of categories. So a functor F from category C to category D, this is an equivalence of categories. So let me write this down. If there exists a functor in the opposite direction, say a functor G from D to C, such that the following two identities are satisfied. Yeah, these two are natural identify, uh, identities you would like to be satisfied. So yeah. Now we this notion of equivalence of categories is, is extremely important and it comes up again and again in algebraic geometry or algebraic topology. So now we are going to mention a proposition which you can find on Kashivara and Shapira's categories and sheaves on page 22. So essentially it says is this. So we want to determine when a functor f which takes c to d is an equivalence of categories. So what are the inherent properties of this functor which will make it as an equivalence of categories? That is there will exist a g such that g not f is id over category c and f not g is id over category d. So the functor f will be equivalence of categories if and only if we have these two conditions which are satisfied. The first is f should be fully faithful 
and second is it should be essentially surjective. We have already defined these maps in the previous lecture. So I want to talk about product of categories and biofunctors. So this is in some sense collects all the information or most of the information we have in this lecture. So we start with the product of categories. Say you are given two categories C and D and you define the product like this. So you take objects of C, um, C times T is precisely what would you expect it to be objects of C times objects of D and I mean times means product essentially and what are the morphisms so you have you fix this object X in category C X prime in D Y in C Y prime in D and you get morphisms precisely as you would expect it to be you take morphisms between objects X and Y in category C and between objects X prime and Y prime in category D. So what is a bifunctor? So bifunctor obviously acts on the product category whose objects and morphisms we have just described. So yeah, notice that product category is essentially determined by the morphisms in this uh, in their original category C and D. So bifunctor just takes C and D to category B. So fix. So what does it essentially do? How does it act? So you first fix an object X of C, and then you see this bifunctor will take T to B. Obviously, because you fixed an object of C. Similarly, you would want to fix an object of D. So once you fix an object of D, the bifunctor will take you from C to B. Yeah, because object in D is fixed. So the only where anything happen, only yeah, the things which can happen can only happen in category C. So moreover, if we are so if you're given a morphism from x to y and c then you want uh, and a morphism from x prime to y prime in d we would want to have the following diagram to be commutative yeah once i draw the diagram uh, it is kind of uh, trivial to see why we would want it so so first you fix the object x so obviously if you fix the object x you are now taking uh, yeah, you are now applying map G and obviously this diagram is in category B. So, so we have a map from X prime to Y prime and that map gets carried over by this functor. In the second case, again, we fix object Y now. Yeah, in the first we got fixed object X, now we fix object Y. Again, we will have the map G here y is fixed with g which carries x prime to y prime similarly in this left hand side you have fixed x prime as you see there so you have to carry x to y so the only map you have to carry x to y is f and uh, this will be it and here you have fixed y prime you have to carry map x to y so x to y is given by f Now some examples. This is uh, this construction is ubiquitous, and we see it again and again. And um, basically, it encapsulates the representable functors. So the first example is like simple. Yeah, this this carries c of times c 
to underlying set. So we have considered both these cases in detail before. If you fix the first object x and then you fix the second object. Now, uh, in mathematics, we essentially see in linear algebra the above recast as this. You have modules over A and uh, you are sending it to the yeah, second also module over A. You are sending it to the underlying module over K where A is a K algebra and then you have a tensor product where again you are sending the same thing you have the same map here. So yeah, two modules over K.